Are you feeling overwhelmed with Anki flashcards that aren't living up to the hype? Early on in my 15 plus years of using Anki, I almost quit. I was miserable, my scores weren't improving, and flashcards were taking over my life. But by identifying and overcoming these mistakes, I scored in the 99.9th .9 percentile on step one, matched at my dream residency at Harvard MGH, and excelled in my exams without cramming or pulling a single all-nighter. I'm Alec Palmerton, and I teach med students aiming for their dream residency how to harness tools like Anki to remember everything important they're learning, master rather than memorize, and excel in any exam. In this video, we'll explore the top reasons why people get discouraged with Anki and how to overcome them. Let's jump in. So one of the most common reasons to be overwhelmed with Anki is you're doing too many new cards per day. So a new card is a card that you've created and are reviewing for the first time. And so it's understandable why this happens. I still remember the first time that I became aware of Anki, I was like, oh my gosh, I can remember anything that I'm learning forever. That is incredible. And so just like the idea that, you know, I, I fell into the trap of a little bit of something is good. And so a lot of something must be much better. The problem is, is it's easy to go overboard. And so without getting into too much detail, the number of Anki reviews that you have to do every single day is going to increase in a predictable manner. And it's going to depend heavily on the new cards that you're reviewing every single day. So let me give you an example. If you're reviewing 50 new cards every single day, then on the first day, you're gonna do roughly 50 reviews. And then on day two and a half, you'll do roughly 100. By day six, you'll be doing roughly 150. And then by day you know, 15.6, by roughly day 16, you'll be doing 200 reviews. And by 39, you'll be 250, okay? So at about a year, you're gonna be doing roughly 350 reviews. That's a lot, but it's not like so overwhelming that you're going to be buried in cards every single day. Now, let's say that you did 100 reviews, 100 new card reviews per day. If you did this, on your first day, you do 100 reviews, on day two and a half, it would be 200, and basically every single interval after that, you're going to be doing double what you were doing previously. So in other words, uh, at roughly the year mark, you're gonna be doing 700 reviews. That's double the number that you'd be doing if you were just doing 50 new cards per day. So one of the ways in which people overwhelm themselves is they're doing too many new cards per day. In a similar vein, Hitting again too often can lead you to get overwhelmed with the number of cards you're doing. The reason for this is simple. Every single time you hit again, it's the equivalent of studying a new card since you're essentially resetting the interval for that card. And so what I found is, is that there are two principal reasons why people hit again too often. The first is maybe you are a perfectionist like me. So oftentimes we worry about maybe we're gonna forget the information, or in my case, I would worry that you know, I'm gonna forget this information and I didn't trust the algorithm, especially closer to exams. So if I saw a card that the interval was gonna be 10 days and my exam was in two days, I might hit again just because I was afraid that if I didn't see it before my test, I might forget it. The second reason is that cards can be too hard. And so if you find yourself you know, hitting again because you are constantly forgetting the information or you don't remember all of the facts in this particular card, then it can often be a sign that your cards are too difficult. And so you should aim for roughly five to 15% of the time to hit again for either young or mature cards in our experience in order to not overwhelm yourself with the number of cards that you're doing. The third reason why people get overwhelmed with Anki is that they're not making conceptual cards and rather memorizing everything as if it were a fact. So one of the most common pieces of advice around Anki and flashcards in general is to have short cards with minimal information on them. Now that does make sense because as we'll discuss later, having too much information information that you're gonna test yourself on can be really overwhelming. However, this is one piece of advice that I generally ignore. And the reason is, is that by making short cards, oftentimes what people are also saying is, is that you should just memorize the information. Why is memorizing so bad? Well, first, it's miserable. Have you ever, ever met anyone who said, oh my gosh, I am so excited to memorize all of this information. It just gets me going in the morning. I have never heard anyone like that. And the reason is, is because it really is just miserable. The second reason, and important, probably more importantly for why people get overwhelmed with Anki, is that memorizing 
is much less efficient and makes your cards much less effective. For example, if I knew why something is, I'm more likely to remember it learn new things faster and get more questions correct on them. As an example, drugs that cross one cell membrane tend to cross others. The reason for that is that cell membranes are basically composed of the same lipid bilayer, whether they're in the brain, the placenta, the GI tract, or the skin. Now, obviously there's some differences between those things, but roughly, but the actual cell membranes itself are composed of basically the same material. And so if a drug can passively cross the blood-brain barrier, it is almost assuredly going to be able to be absorbed transdermally. And you could probably take it orally, and you can probably, it will probably cross the placenta. For example, I know that marijuana, which acts on the brain must cross the blood-brain barrier, which means it must cross cell membranes. Because it can cross cell membranes, I also know that it can also probably cross the skin. And so when I look this up, THC can be given as a patch, which is interesting. <laughs> right? Makes sense though, because it can cross one membrane being the brain and another in the skin. Alcohol similarly works on the central nervous system, so it must cross the blood-brain barrier. Because of that, it also must be able to be absorbed from the skin, which if you look at research studies, you can find plenty of studies that show that there is transdermal absorption of alcohol-based scrubs. Another thing is, is that basically any neurodrug that you take can cross the placenta. And so, one of the things that you need to know for OB and pediatrics is you need to know which drugs are likely to cross the placenta so that you can advise pregnant women. So a good shorthand is, is that any drug that can act on the brain will also cross the placenta because it can cross the blood-brain barrier. So most likely it's also going to cross the placenta. And so if I didn't know the concept and I memorized all these things as facts, I'd have to make hundreds, if not thousands of cards. And so understanding the concept behind it will actually allow you to become less overwhelmed with Anki, not only because you'll enjoy doing Anki more and have more motivation to do it, but also because you will have fewer cards that you'll have to make and review because you'll understand the underlying principles. Do you wanna master rather than memorize and match in your dream residency? Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so you can learn how to transform your approach and learn smarter and score higher. The fourth reason why people get overwhelmed with Anki is that they change the default settings so that they see their cards too often. And so without getting into too much detail, you can change how frequently you see a card or what the maximum intervals would be. And so examples of this would be students will change the maximum interval. So they'll say, oh, okay, well, I never want my interval to be more than say a year. That can create a lot of extra reviews as can, for example, changing the number of times that you see a card before you increase the interval. And so instead of trying to list all of the different settings, I'll just show you if you may have fallen into this trap. Okay, so in order to see if you messed up your settings, you'll go back to the, the, main, Anki, the main Anki page, and then you'll go to um, options. And so in options, only two settings that I recommend that you change on Anki are the number of new cards per day, which at most I would say 50 new cards per day, and the maximum reviews per day, which I recommend as 9999. Other than that, I really do recommend that you use the basic settings. And if you're not sure if, you've, if you're using the default settings, then you can check uh, by seeing if there is a little circle arrow. And so I'll give you an example. So let's say that this was one day and then one week here. You see how now, because I've changed this, I can, there's this circle arrow. And so if I wanted to go back to the default setting, I can just click on the arrow and then click here to restore it to the default. And so what you can do is just scroll down briefly and just check to see, particularly for the ones that determine like the, the intervals, see are there any settings that you've changed? And so this is another common one that can get people in trouble is, is if your maximum interval is say like 365 as opposed to 36,500, right? That will change the maximum interval that you will see your cards. And so again, you can just check. So let's say that I, you know, this was 36, then I can just see very quickly, oh, okay, this was something that was different from the default and I can click on it and change it. The fifth reason why people get overwhelmed with Anki is, is that they will skip days for reviews. And so if you don't review your cards for a day, they are just gonna be added to your next day's total, which honestly makes it even harder to study. And so one of the reasons that I developed the habit of doing my cards every day, even when my daughter was born and even the day that I took step one and even the day that I got married was because I had experiences early on where if I didn't do my cards for that particular day, it just made my next day that much more painful. And so we've all experienced the pain of missing days reviews. When that happens, 
be sure to use that pain as motivation to be more consistent with your Anki reviews next time. The sixth reason why people get overwhelmed with Anki is, is that they make their cards too long. And so I know I said before that it's important to understand why things are. However, it is possible to make cards that are too overwhelming. So let me give you an example. Let's say that I had a card that asked about epidural hematoma's pathogenesis, the presentation, the treatment, the speed of progression, and the CT findings. That is gonna be overwhelming because all of that information, if I, if I just missed one particular thing from, that, from the card, I would have to review the entire card again. And the likelihood that I would forget one of those facts is really, really high. So I'm gonna end up reviewing that card again and again. It's going to be miserable, and I'm gonna feel like Anki is not working for me. Now, as a rule, I recommend only putting information on a card that can be logically connected to the other information. So not necessarily the same subject, but information that has some sort of logical connection. So an example that breaks this rule would be if I had on, this, on the same card that an epidemic epidural hematoma comes from the rupture of the middle meningeal artery, which is also deep to the terion. Those three facts are not necessarily related in a logical way. They're, I mean, they're related in the sense that they are all true and they're all about an epidural hematoma, but you can't logically relate how the terion is associated with the high pressure and the fast expansion of the middle meningeal artery bleed. A better example of something where you're connecting two logical things is the fact that an epidural hematoma comes from the high pressure middle meningeal artery and that it expands quickly. And so logically, I can relate the fact that the middle meningeal artery, because it's an artery, it'll have a higher pressure, will also expand quickly because that blood that you know is bleeding from the, from the artery will expand at a much faster rate and therefore progress more quickly. And so again, to ensure that you're not making super long cards, put information that you can relate to each other logically so that the cards are less overwhelming. And the final reason why people get overwhelmed with Anki is that you're not making your own cards. When I started out, I was like, okay, Anki takes a lot of time to make cards. It also takes a lot of time to review the cards. And so what if I just took all my time that I was using to make the cards and just put it to reviewing the cards? That way, I could get through many more reviews. Now, on the surface, that makes a lot of sense. What I can tell you, though, is, is that the vast majority of students that, that tell me things like, I get overwhelmed with Anki or Anki isn't for me, I'm not really an Anki person, it didn't work. In the vast majority of cases, they are using pre-made cards. Now, why is that? The first reason is that pre-made cards tend to be very memorization heavy, which as we discussed before, is both miserable and takes longer because you're gonna have to make more cards to memorize all of that information rather than seeing these things as applications of concepts. The second reason is, is that pre-made cards have to kind of be everything for everyone, which means they have to be able to teach someone who has you know very little knowledge about that particular topic and get them up to speed. So when you have that situation, you're gonna end up studying a lot of things that you know already Ready, which is going to kind of weigh you down because you can have a lot of extra cards that you don't necessarily need. And you're also going to underemphasize the things that you don't know as well, because it's probably not going to cover those subjects particularly well, especially since it's not that easy to learn from Anki cards to begin with. And so in an ideal world, you make your own cards. We have other videos on how to make cards. And so I would recommend that you watch those. However, if you insist on using pre-made decks, I would recommend two things. The first is you want to be selective on choosing the cards that are most relevant to your gap and your weaknesses. So in other words, don't just go and try and do all of the cards from a particular section. Instead, maybe suspend all of the cards in that particular deck and then search for the cards that are relevant to the subject that you're studying and unsuspend them. So that way you're only studying the things that are most relevant to you. The second is I would highly recommend that you edit the cards to include information that is gonna help you to understand why so that you're not just memorizing it. Not only will this help you see the under underlying concepts and learn how to reinforce and apply them. But in addition to that, the actual act of making cards oftentimes will help you to learn it better so that you can get more out of your studying itself. You can also check out other videos that we have on how to make sure that you, you do your Anki cards even when you really don't want to. Do you have a love-hate relationship with Anki? Do you have any questions? Be sure to let us know in the comments. We use your questions and comments to generate videos and would love to get your input. Thank you and we'll see you in the next one.